up everybody. The FCC allegedly failed to collect more than a hundred million dollars worth of penalties uh, imposed on companies that defrauded the Obama phone. Remember that one? Gillian Melcher, National Review, all over this story. Let me yes. repeat this. Make sure I got it right. Obama phone comes out, a hundred million dollars worth of fraud in the system. So fines the, for fraud. Fines for fraud in yeah. the system. So the government goes after various companies and says, give us the money back. Yep. And they got nothing? They get nothing for it. There's so much red tape around collecting fines, collecting fees. But we're, we're talking about a program where waste and fraud and abuse are fundamentally built into the infrastructure of this program. There's huge incentive for companies to do it. And uh, they're getting away with it with impunity. This shows it. Um, who, which is the biggest company mm -hmm. that is guilty of this kind of fraud and where a fine or penalty was imposed? Well, there are a lot of them, but I think the biggest recipient of this program has been TrackPhone. It's owned by Carlos Slim. He's a Mexican billionaire, one of the richest people in the world. But it trickles all the way down. I mean, there's one company that I was looking at, uh, $52 million in revenue, has been repeatedly caught defrauding the program. I spoke to one of the employees who was telling me that he was being trained to forge signals to falsify information. Um, he's getting $3 for every phone he hangs out. The phone company is getting $9.25 every single month from companies that they do it. They get slapped with a $1 million fee that who knows if they pay. I don't think they're going to change their behavior. So it's unqualified people getting these phones. Yeah. Phone companies and agents reaping in the money. Yes. They're pay penalized for doing what they're doing yes. and they don't pay. Yes. And Carlos Slim, how much, do you have any idea how much he has made out of this program, uh, the, Obama phones? Well, the year that I got three Obama phones without even qualifying for one of them. You did? I, I did. I did, yeah. You just, uh, tried, just, just figured showed out, up and it, they hand them out on the street. Uh, you sign up for it. They didn't check any of my identification, didn't check my welfare eligibility. And I got three free phones in the mail, even though with my income, I could have had a family of like six or seven and not been eligible. Um, so, and I think this is what's so frustrating about this is it shows the intractability of these federal programs. I mean, waste, fraud, yes. abuse, story, story, story comes out about this, and the Obama administration wants to expand the program. And so the program, Obama phones, mm -hmm. still in place. Oh yeah. It's not. It's not gone away. It's no. not been dissolved and no. walked away from. They want to expand it? They're talking about expanding it to include broadband. And every time one of these stories comes out, we hear the FCC saying, "Oh, we're reforming it. We're taking all these steps." No, this is a program that is fundamentally full of waste, fraud, and abuse, and it needs to be eliminated. It, you, you, we're paying for it. You've got to get back me, get me back to Carlos Slim. Uh -huh. Rich, one of the richest guys in the world. Yes. Second or third, I think he is. How much did he get? How much did it, TrackPhone was his company? TrackPhone's his company. How, what was their revenue from Obama phone? In a single year, it was half a billion dollars. We're talking about a co this program, $2.2 billion under the Obama administration in a single year. It's dropped down to about $1.7 billion this year. But this is an incredible boondoggle. We're all paying for it. If you look at your phone bill, there's a universal service fund fee. Um, that's your money going to fund this program that's every right. month. That's right. I was looking at my phone bill. Yes. Not too long ago, <laughs> and I could not explain that little t is the last that's line. I is. think it is, and it's a tax. Yes. And I pay it every single phone bill that I ever get. Mm -hmm. That funds Obama phones. Yes. That's what's subsidizing it. You are paying the phone companies to run this program that they're making a ton of money off of. Uh, giving phones to people who don't deserve it. And it works for the street level vendor to make money off it. It works for the corporations to make money off of it. This is a welfare program that began for the poor and has become corporate welfare. Now, they want to expand it. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, they want to expand it to free internet. Yes. Is that that's accurate? Yeah, free broadband service. People are pushing back, but I, I don't think it's frankly going to work because this is a Democrat-controlled FCC. This is the Obama administration, which has taken step after step after step to expand welfare. Yeah. I, I just don't see them showing restraint. This is if all the programs in government, this is one of the repeat worst offenders. The rationale Larson. for the Obama phone at first was, well, mm -hmm. you need a phone so you can apply for a job. Yeah. And so people who need to apply for a job need a phone. Give them an Obama phone. Yeah, well, this was back in, like, the 1980s when we're talking about landlines, which are much harder to duplicate. But it's called the Obama phone program because in the Obama administration, we saw way more people get on welfare. We saw how much this program costs taxpayers double. Um, we're talking billions of dollars a year for this. 
um, and then it's expanding. So I think the Obama administration needs to take responsibility for it. This is a problem we know about, and they're not fixing it. I'm going to hold you up for just one second. Okay. Viewers, if you see on the left-hand side of your screen, that is the podium. President of the United States will approach that podium shortly, not exactly